So I'm Kristen Cook. I am a fish and wildlife biologist with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And I'm also a graduate student at Montana State University. And I'm working on a project with western pearl shell mussels, a native species of concern, a freshwater mussel. So right now we're in the Flint Rock watershed in western Montana. So the mussels release their babies, which are larvae, into the water. Those larvae attach to the gills of a fish and they live there for about six weeks and then they actually go through metamorphosis, transform into juvenile mussels and fall off of the fish. And wherever they fall off is where they land. Now the mussel larvae can't live on any species of fish, it needs a specific species of fish. And so we're looking at different trout species to determine which species of trout the mussel larvae can attach to. Uh, this is the shocker. Here I'm holding the uh, electrode. This tip is the anode. Here's the tail, mm -hmm. the cathode. And with that, you can make a current, shocks the fish. and. Oh, Rob over here can net them. <laughs> <laughs> the fish are drawn to the anode or the electricity, and so they'll swim towards it, but they actually don't completely knock out. They're just being drawn in. Once we capture the fish, we anesthetize them. This is the anesthesia. So it knocks the fish out, so they're pretty much just put to sleep. Then we just get length and weights to get an idea of how old that fish is and we will open up the curriculum, the covering that covers their gills, and we look at each gill. So there's four sets of gills on these trout, and so we look at the gills to see if there are little mussel larvae on them, and what it looks like is these little white round dots. Generally, we only see like maybe one or 200 larvae on a fish, and that does not harm the fish at all. The reason that we care about these native mussels and we're trying to conserve them is that these native mussels are providing benefits to our fish, such as um, increasing the nutrients, increasing food sources, cleaning up the water. An adult mussel can filter 20 gallons of water a day, which is a lot of water, and they have a really important role in the food web. So the Fish and Wildlife Service is in charge of threatened and endangered species and the western pearl shell mussel is not to that status it's just a species of concern but we want to do everything we can to prevent this mussel from getting listed to threatened or endangered so we really want to try to help this mussel out before it gets too late so there's a lot of reasons why mussels are declining across the globe some of it has to do with diseases some of it is water quality and contaminants and then also they really rely on their host fish in order to move them upstream and disperse them without the host fish these mussels cannot survive I think the reason these western pearl shells are declining is because their host fish, the West Slope cutthroat, this is the host fish that they evolved with, is now also declining. So with the decline of West Slope cutthroat, we have the decline of western pearl shells, is what we believe. Can you eat these mussels? I don't think you would want to because they live to 100 years old and they're mostly gonadal tissue. And also they're a species of concern, so no, you cannot harvest them. 100 years old? Yes. Wow, and how big do they get when they're 100 years old? Like this big. Wow. Have you ever seen one that big? Yep, yesterday I have a picture of it. <laughs> how does it feel to be holding something that's been alive for 100 years? Very scary. <laughs>